talking about. At the same time, I'm eliminating three or four times voltage stresses on output switches, on input switches, making it equal to the input and output DC voltages. But at the same time, my transformer will have 10 times smaller flux. So I solve all of that. There is no trade-off, you know? So that's why I can confidently say, look, I, I, I need to get that uh, charger to 25 kilowatt inside the car. So what I need to do? At least reduce the weight 10 times. Reduce the losses 10 times, because if I don't reduce it, I'm going to get the losses, and I have to put a heat sink to make up for it. And the third one, I have to uh, have a big cost. You know, how much cost that uh, 60 hertz transformer at uh, 200 kilowatt? A lot of magnetics, a lot of copper winding, and so on. Is this possible? I say yes. I was convinced before Thanksgiving last year, but I'll tell you how I got to it. Now, what is a true bridgeless PFC converter? That's this converter here. Uh, you see, this is my original uh, true converter polarity inverting. And I'll show you now a very simple step. It's always simple. <laughs> this converter is like all the other polarity non-inverting. A polarity uh, one direction, unidirectional converter, which means one polarity of voltage, you only get one polarity on the output. In other words, you cannot have input being positive or negative and get positive on the output. No, it's either positive input, positive output, or, or like in true converter, positive input, negative output. So what happens? Uh, if I uh, want to get this, this is the only thing you need to change. I mean, I say only. Look at that inductor. I just get, remember I told you, I don't like that inductor, right? In a buck. I just eliminate it for you. So I replace that inductor with what? I replace it with a diode switch. Oh, I think all these uh, power management companies should love me because I'm not using inductors, I'm using their devices, right? <laughs> Except that's not the case. But, and then the di uh, diode on the output, which was in negative direction, I reverse direction of the diode, and now both of them are pointing to the output. But you see what happened. The, and of course, that inductor, which was PWM inductor, is no longer inductor uh, PWM. It is in series with the primary, or uh, in series with this uh, capacitor, which becomes now a resonant capacitor, and this inductor becomes a resonant inductor. And now, what can I do now? I can simply put a sine wave voltage on the input, and voila, it, you know, that switch is there, right? And that switch uh, is uh, allowed to, you see, we will show it in a minute, but it is now first converter, which is a single converter, which allows either positive or negative input voltage. Where is the bridge? There is no bridge. Now, uh, I, uh, here it is. So now, you see, uh, for a positive cycle, what happens? Uh, output diode is connected with the series with the input inductor, and then conducts the current and charging the capacitor. And on the next slide, you will see that um, uh, Capacitor has to be discharged. Now it's discharged in the opposite direction, so there is a circulating current through the uh, input switch and that diode. So it is fine. It operates. So what I'm trying to say is that two diodes on the output are playing the role, like uh, replacing this uh, non-existent ghost full, full rectifier, because each diode is actually playing a role. One diode is saying, I'm doing rectification for a positive cycle, and the other diode says, I'm automatically doing rectification for negative. How bad is that? Okay? Now, I wanted yesterday, those who had a benefit of uh, t attending my um, um, four-hour seminar, I used the program, simulation program, uh, um, and, uh, which I, how you say, speed it up so much. But we don't have a time to uh, uh, present that. But what I did there is um, I added uh, at the top of this switch on the input, I added one more switch, which is a um, uh, voltage clamp. Across that switch S, I put a voltage clamp switch. Now, what, what is the function of that? Function of that is now that this, what I call this hybrid switching method, now when I put a voltage clamp across it, I have the basically two resonances. And by doing so, uh, I don't have, for the first time, listen, for the first time, we do not have a problem with the leakage inductance of a transformer. Because you will see that what I showed there, LR, it's not any more fixed inductance, resonant inductance. When I put isolated version, so this is actually non-isolated version operating with this way. Uh, this is an isolated version, okay? Uh, isolated converter. So what I needed to do for isolated converter to make it operate on AC, as you can see here, the same thing. Put a diode on the output, uh, eliminate, uh, replace uh, 
diode instead of inductor. And uh, here it is, uh, the AC to DC. And that switch S will have a complementary switch, which is a voltage clamp which means that complementary switch is not even a power switch. I don't call it a power switch because it is an AC switch. AC switch has a five times less RMS current than a, than a main switch S, so therefore its RMS losses are 25 times lower than a main switch, so hardly affects anything. But makes a converter operate such that the front end becomes a really boost converter uh, with a fixed voltage, and then whole transformer does provide isolation, and very simply with the a, with a two diodes. So now, if I uh, do this, this is a isolated version. Here is what I demonstrated yesterday to the people uh, there. Um, unfortunately, I don't have this picture, but with this voltage clamp and uh, changing the output to be a uh, half bridge, which is unique and nobody is using it that way, what happens is I don't need output inductor to do any filtering because by having a two stack capacitor, you know what happens? You see bottom line in the last two, four, six, channel. On the sixth channel, you see the red waveform and you see a green waveform. Red waveform is a ripple voltage on a top capacitor, uh, which are stacked, and a green voltage is a waveform on a bottom capacitor. You see they have a 20 volt ripple, okay? But total voltage on the output is summation of these AC ripple voltages, which is down 20 times reduced. So I don't need an inductor to do any reduction. And more, more than that, you know, this 400 volt output has a two 250 volt capacitors. Each capacitor is 100 nano, 100 nano, nano farad, okay? And each case is a, uh, they make a TDK recently, made uh, those which are in a very small um, 805, uh, um, and it has eight amps ripple current capability. So you have a single small capacitor, like this, eight amps, and uh, 400 volts, you're talking about a, uh, for kilowatts, all right? Where is that huge inductor? It's not there, okay? And as I pointed out, so there is a filtering on the output, but you see what is a, a, a third trace, uh, fourth trace from the bottom. You see one half a sine wave, nothing, and then half a sine wave backwards. Well, that's the primary current of that transformer. It shows that the average current is zero. So this transformer works with uh, no energy storage, no gap needed. It's an AC transformer. and uh, but I can change the duty ratio from 0.15 to 0.75 and have a 4 to 1 change. And what happens with the, look at the top traces. Input is 200 volt and the output at 50% duty ratio is just like in a buck twice in a boost. It's 400 volt. But you see the second trace, uh, second channel of the or from the top is actually seeing switch sees 400 volts. So what happened? My two diode switches on output see 400 volt. My two switches on the input see 400 volts. So where is that need? You know what our people are doing now? I'm just flabbergasted. You know, some people who are doing this, and you know, uh, maybe some people recognize maybe they're doing the same thing. I have some my, my own PhD students who are working at a, uh, not to mention company, developing high, in, high. Um, uh, okay, okay, fine. Uh, they're talking about then, uh, they're talking about um, um, silicon carbide, and they are making for a battery charger for electric car, which is 400 volts, because they use that full bridge with inductor. They are talking about, oh, we are making now 1200 to 1800 volt device for 400 volt output. And they say, oh, but in the future, we want to use 1200 volt bus. So what we are going to do? At 1200 volt bus, we are going to need the, the uh, say, uh, three switches of uh, 1800 volts casca in a Casco connection to give you 5000 volt switch. Why are you doing that? I'll show you in a second that basically uh, when I use a three phase converter and I have isolation in a converter, what I can do? Each output is 400 volts, right? So because they're isolated, I can stack them together. They don't have a problem of sharing like in a Casco switches and I get a 1200 volt bus with the 450 volt switches. So why are you developing 1800 volt switches, you know, and, or 3000 or 6000 volt switches? And of course, you are switching them, turning them on and off in a high current, and I'm turning them off and on in zero current. As you see, both, to, both of these two diodes, you see at the bottom, next, uh, next to the last trace, there are two rectified half sine waves. No problem. And there is no problem that uh, there is any overlap because one diode cannot turn on before the other diodes turn off. 
So they are kind of a, in complementary way because they are commutated by voltage, not by current, as it is forward converter, which causes a problem. You cannot leave, you know, put a synchronous rectifier. You have to actually overlap it because uh, the current source will be left dangling and it'll uh, destroy the switch. Okay. Long story short, transformer is AC transformer. Uh, here is a key. When you analyze this converter, remember what I told you. When I eliminate the output inductor, at the same time, I killed all this overkill on the voltage stresses, uh, uh, stresses on the current and so on. But you know what I did also? Look at the transformer on the right hand side. All classical converters have a volt a second, which is proportional to output voltage per turn. And say if you want turn, then volt seconds are output voltage times a switching period, if it is constant. This converter has a boost-like characteristic which boost only uses non isolated If you have isolated boost, you can use it, you know, regular isolated boost. So what happened, the boost characteristic is that the flux is function of duty ratio. And you know which way? It's D times one minus D. So at duty ratio 0.5, flux is four times smaller than uh, the, the um, uh, bridge type converter. But at 0.1 duty ratio, you are 0.1 times 0.9, you're 10 times smaller. Even at 50% duty ratio, when your flux your core losses are flux, uh, core losses per unit volume times the volume. So if I have a, a four times lower flux, I can actually use a six times or eight times smaller cross section. Why? Because total losses are proportional to losses per unit volume times the volume. So if I reduce the volume six times, I can afford having higher flux density because I can afford that extra uh, lot because its total loss will be still lower. Okay. Anyway. Uh, this is a, a flux comparison. So what I'm trying to say is this. You guys are nowadays using you know, one megahertz converter, which is uh, at full bridge, just an, uh, operating only at 10%, 5% uh, uh, of uh, 20 millitesla. You could operate that full bridge at, at 100 kilohertz and have a full flux thing of 150, 200 millitesla. And with the same size as the other one, and you won't overload it. But here, I'm telling you, we are on the same level. And now I can have a transformer 10 times smaller. How bad is that? Anyway, this is a uh, demonstration of the, of the non-isolated PFC, uh, current proportional to the voltage. Uh, the key is now three phase. And I mentioned yesterday when someone was talking uh, uh, about on one of the seminars about United States, and United States doesn't use three phase for charging. And they saw three phase charger in uh, Europe, and three phase charger maybe in uh, Japan or so on, and China for sure. You know why? I call that a, that's a legacy of Edison. He never wanted to have a single phase to, to be used, let alone three phase. And when I was uh, putting the power for my uh, building that I had, and I needed 100 kilowatts so we can use it, I couldn't put a three phase. I had to specially order it and find one guy who is capable and knows how to install the three phase. Okay, and and in me, uh, it's a misnomer. Anything over a couple of kilowatts, uh, not to use a three phase. Why? Because a three phase has a beautiful feature that I'll show you just in a second. If you use a power factor correction, unity power factor on each phase, current proportional, sinusoidal proportional to voltage, what do you have? Each phase creates a fluctuating power at a DC level and sine wave at twice the frequency superimposed on it. But because you have three phase and a 120%, uh, 120 degrees phase shifted, all these three phase sine wave add to what? Add to constant power. That's why your induction motor or synchronous motor has a continuous torque because it has a constant power and constant speed and constant torque. Okay. So now what happens? Well, if you now connect this three phase through isolated transformer and a secondary, what do you get? Uh, well, that was uh, before that. Uh, I think uh, uh, this is implementation of the switch, and that was what I'm talking about. Initially, I thought I need a um, two-quadrant switch. You know, positive uh, first and third quadrant. That doesn't exist, so I had to put two MOSFET in power. That doesn't work. You know, hundred dollars a special to chip, and it's problem to make it connect and so on. Eventually, uh, Thanksgiving just a year ago, I celebrated with my uh, daughters and wife uh, Thanksgiving uh, on the 25th. And a uh, year ago, I came up with that. I was just talking to her because she was working on an IC chip design. I said, "Yeah, is there any way I can eliminate, not use a?" Um, um, first and uh, third quarter. When I came back that night, I came with the idea. So now I don't need, uh, even though I have AC input, I don't need a, 
uh, voltage bidirectional switch or two quadrant, I can use a single quadrant switch like everybody else, gallium nitro, etc. And uh, you know, I told my daughters and you know, family, yeah, I have something up coming, and I said, Dad, how did you come up with that? And I said, very simple, uh, elementary. I started working on that project problem 40 years ago. Uh, so this leads now to further reduction of the size uh, and uh, losses and uh, uh, price. And uh, uh, so if we go here, conclusion, Tesla three-phase alternating AC current efficiently converted to direct DC current. No storage. That's why you need, you know what? If you use a single phase like it's done in US, you, you may have a big uh, conver uh, converter, but even bigger is a capacitor you need to output because you have to uh, uh, filter that out at the 60 or 120 hertz, not at the 120 kilohertz. So that's a problem. Um, um, what's the next step? You have an EV charger, electric EV charger. You see it's, uh, <laughs> moon at night. You can use AC to DC and five times cheap electricity to charge. And during the day, you can use the same converter and going from DC to AC. Well, my uh, uh, structure and my configuration is ready to that. I know of only one company, and Mercedes is for the last 10 years always asking, and they talked to me as well at one point, they wanted to have a bi-directional converter. But nobody, they have a specs for it, but nobody could deliver them. Nobody has that. And it's very complicated. And this here is basically uh, natively uh, ready to be uh, bi-directional in power. Okay, so given that, we go to the next one. This is my next goal. So I think, um, you know, Professor Antunes uh, was nice to tell me that this spec conference will be happening every year. I uh, like coming to Fortaleza. I've never been to New Zealand, and I understand next year will be New Zealand. And uh, with your support, I'll accept to go there and give you the, uh, uh, how you say, uh, next installment, part two, what I'm talking today. And that is that basically uh, Tesla, when he invented this three-phase system, everybody's shooting it like, Single phase was bad, and now he came up with a three phase. Uh, then uh, what he did is, in the fight with Edison against his DC system, he says, DC is a dull and boring. It has only one frequency, zero. And AC is exciting because you can go 60 hertz. In fact, originally, I'm finishing, just closing. Uh, um, <laughs> so I am, I am uh, um, uh, so basically he said, uh, AC is exciting and uh, I can go to any high frequencies. Now, I'm not saying that I'm Tesla, but I took uh, his uh, advice that yes, at his day a time in 1895, there were no switches. In fact, there were not even a diodes, a power diodes to do 